All right, everyone, put one hand up in the comment if you are sick and tired and dizzy from all of the new releases on the market lately. And then put two hands up in the comments if you're crazy like me and still want to try them all. <laughs> this video is focused on new designer releases here at the top of 2024. So I'm filming this in early March, the first weekend in March to be exact. And already in January and February, there has been like a deluge of very many designer fragrances and spoiler alert, I think a lot of them are super cool. And I also at the end of the video wanna dedicate some time to some of the releases from 2023 that I think deserve some spotlight and I haven't really had an opportunity to talk about on this channel. Before we go on, let us know in the comments, one of two things or both if you're interested what have you been most interested in in terms of new designer releases so just put most interested followed by the name of the fragrance or least interested in if there's something that you've seen come on the market where you're just like mm, that looks really pedestrian and boring or uninteresting or i bet that smells like this put down in the comments least interested and the name of the fragrance so i have nine new releases to talk about and maybe like a handful from 2023 to just touch on at the end of the video so let's kick off here with one of the most talked about releases at the top of 2024 miss dior 2024 eau de parfum I have to tell you, I'm not familiar with all of the previous releases of Miss Dior, Miss Dior Cherie, and all of that. I know people are mourning the loss of Miss Dior Cherie. I wish I could partake in that morning with you. I have no idea what that's about because I never had that fragrance. I'm sure I smelled it on someone. So I'll tell you about this fragrance. I wore this to brunch last Saturday with my girlfriends and I was pretty much feeling myself. I thought I smelled fantastic. <laughs> this reminds me very much of the late 80s, 90s powerhouse fragrances that ladies wore when they wanted to smell sophisticated and elegant. But what I appreciate about this is that the fruity aspects of this keep this on the light, fresh, and fun side without getting too serious i don't think of this as like those powerhouse florals in fact i think the floral aspect in here which i believe is a jasmine note sort of takes a back seat and the prominent players are these bright fun fresh fruits it's supposed to be a wild strawberry I'll tell you, it's not like if someone were walking by smelling this, I would sniff and think, ooh, that person has a strawberry fragrance on. It isn't that pronounced or that distinguishable of a strawberry note, but it is a bright, fruity top note and middle note, and it kind of stays throughout the life of the fragrance. Also accompanied by a soft, delicate patchouli. The patchouli adds some base, as does amber and amber wood, both of which have some resinous qualities to them. So for me, this sort of leans in, I would say, a subtle powerhouse direction. When you think of powerhouse, you tend to think of a big, bombastic, room-filling fragrance. I do think this can fill a space immediately upon spray and probably for maybe the first 30 minutes thereafter. It does settle down a bit. This is not a skin scent, though, as people were saying. The critique here is that this doesn't last long. I can't smell it on myself. I don't know what's happening there. All I can tell you is that when I wore it last Saturday, and I did give myself a pretty generous spray. I would probably say a good 10 to 12 sprays or so. I was projecting and I last, this lasted long on me. This lasted for, I would say until the early afternoon, I sprayed it early morning, probably about eight o'clock. So it was two or three o'clock in the afternoon and I was still smelling this on myself and thinking, dang, I smell really good. <laughs> It was very well received in this house. You know, I have some picky folks here and everyone liked this on me. So this is a big winner. It's a, like I said, a classic sort of fruit chuli type of fragrance, but definitely gets a big thumbs up and I have zero regrets about buying the big bottle. Another really talked about release. And I'm gonna tell you what, I, I sort of wish I had not read any reviews on this. You know, reading reviews can be such a mixed bag. They, they're all over the place sometimes, especially on new releases. This is Tiger Lily. I'm a flower bomb girl. I have been for a long time. It was one of the fragrances that my husband first, actually it was the first fragrance that he gifted me and it has special meaning to me. And I've liked the flankers of it pretty much so far. I don't have them all, but I've enjoyed them. So when this came out and I saw that it had a mango and a coconut note, say no more. I mean, I am a tropical girl at heart somewhere. When I've seen those two notes together in other fragrances, I have typically enjoyed them. However, the reviews are just all over the place. This doesn't last long. The mango is fleeting. The coconut is fleeting. I think that this is boring. I don't understand why people are talking about this. So I went ahead and purchased a travel spray. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm going to give this a good seven-ish out of 10, maybe between seven and eight range. This does give me vibes of Dolce Garden which is another really delicious, juicy coconut fragrance with other florals and sweet touches. And that one is that one is almost sweet and syrupy. This reminds me like a cross between that 
and Leisure in Paradise from Simone Andrioli if you have tried that one. I do get coconut and mango in here. I don't get a sticky mango like I do in some other fragrances. It's a lighter, maybe more perfumey mango, but it's there and I can smell it. And I definitely smell a nice, subtle, not in your face coconut. So for those of you that are not fans of coconut, but you want to try a coconut fragrance just to see, perhaps get your nose on this one. I'm going to tell you what, this also has some delicious warm florals in it. This is going to be beautiful for summertime, a nice sort of resort, living your best life in the summertime, eating dinner on the boardwalk type of fragrance, date night type of thing. I immediately thought this is really nice, very enveloping, very mature, very sexy, very warm and cozy and summery. And my husband really liked it. On initial spray, he was like, ooh, that's really nice. So I do see myself getting a bottle of this in the future and would say to you, try it out. You know, those kinds of tropical notes, mango and coconut and so forth, people love or hate them. So you definitely need to enjoy a tropical, floral, sweet vibe to enjoy this. But I like it. I like the, the color of the juice in the bottle. I like that it's in the flower bomb bomb bottle. And so I'm giving this a thumbs up. So, you know, rest in peace to my wallet because I'm coming off of February's Valentine's Day and President's Day sales where I went bananas and did some straight hauling, like some old school, let me buy 3,486 fragrances types of hauls. And I really see the next one coming into my collection at some point also. So this is like this never ending spiral of I need every fragrance. I want them all. They're all beautiful. <sighs> Send help. <laughs> This is My Way Nectar from Armani. I was fully expecting not to enjoy this fragrance either because of the reviews and people are like, eh, it's so designer, it's so boring, it's so banal. Okay, so I had to try it. I love the way the bottle looks, this beautiful sort of pink pastel-y type of color. We're heading into spring. Who doesn't love a good pink pastel? I'm definitely having a pink moment overall in the products in the other parts of my life. So why not this? <laughs> And let me tell you, this is lovely. If I didn't know anything, I would tell you that this had some nice juicy fruits in it, like pear and some florals. It's a little bit sort of watery in tone and texture. And I like it. It does not remind me of the original My Way or any of the flankers at all. I guess it has some of the DNA of the original, but for me, this sort of stands on its own as this light, bright, fruity, floral fragrance, maybe more fruity than floral in some ways until you get to the dry down. And then it has this really sort of watery, aquatic, floral nature to it. I think this is lovely, really lovely. And I will say that this would be really a nice, gentle fragrance for the young folks in your life, particularly young ladies who like the sort of light, fluffy, girly, make you feel pretty, like you're wearing a tutu type of fragrances. This is in that realm. And it's very non offensive. Uh, I will say that this has very, very modest, I can't even say moderate, modest projection and stays close to you personally and has moderate longevity. So it's not an all day fragrance, but listen for summer in the heat of summer, when it's going to be 80 and 90 and sometimes a hundred or over, depending on what part of the world you're in when it's summer and how hot it gets there. This would be lovely if you wanted to feel feminine and pretty without being overwhelmed. I like this. This reminds me very much of Daisy Oh So Fresh that has the strawberry and other bright light florals in it. It's almost like if you amped up the intensity of that fragrance, cause that is like a thin wispy fragrance. If you amp that intensity up more, added sort of a sweet pear note to it, you might get something like My Way Nectar. I think you cannot go wrong with this. You cannot go wrong with this, especially if you like the note of pear, especially if you like light aquatic florals in a fragrance, beautiful. What are all these reviews complaining about? I'm so lost sometimes when I see these reviews. I'm gonna tell you what I think is going on. This is just my best guess, you know, not having done a survey, not having done any research. I think there are so many of us that have been testing and trying fragrances for so long that the bar to be impressed just keeps going up and up and up and up where there's a completely lovely fragrance that is mass appealing and a lot of people would really enjoy. But because you've tried hundreds of fragrances, and sometimes in the case of a, a number of us here, thousands of fragrances, that it's like something has to be so far out of the ordinary for us to enjoy it and be impressed with it. And I just think that that's kind of a real shame because we miss all the beauties along the way. So to each their own, if you want to continue to chase the next unicorn thing that's so new, unique, and different, hey, so be it. 
but I'm here for all of my viewers, including those of you that are new to fragrance and, or you don't have 10,936 bottles in your collection. <laughs> I don't have that many, but you appreciate fragrances that honestly, they just smell good. They smell good. All right, let's go on. Oh, did I give you a rating for this? I would probably give this between maybe a high six into a, a low seven range, which is nice for me. I mean, I would definitely enjoy wearing this fragrance. So while I'm over here giving unsolicited advice about fragrances, let me also say trying in store can be a hit or miss experience. You're smelling a lot of fragrances in the air. And oftentimes you're given something on a blotter and you're trying to smell it right away. And really what you're picking up is a lot of the sort of fumes that need to dissipate and evaporate before you actually get to the essence of the fragrance. So I can't stress enough to see if the sales associate is willing to give you a sample to take home with you that you can try maybe early in the morning or late at night when you haven't had like your nose fatigue out from trying all these fragrances all at once. And maybe you can get a better sense of what the fragrance smells like. I still think that sampling can be a bit of a crapshoot until you have the bottle and are able to spray on. The other thing about sampling that I think is really, really difficult is that what we tend to do is spray on a piece of our body, usually the back of the wrist or something like that. And then what do we do? We go, but that's not how people experience fragrance. And what I find beautiful about fragrances is when you spray the blotter or spray your clothing or spray yourself or whatever, and it fills the space around you. And that scent that comes off a few feet off is really what the fragrance actually smells like to other people around you. So that for me is really what's important. Obviously, if it's super stinky when you go <laughs> smell up close, it's a no-go. I'm not saying that. But if you're not super impressed by like sniffing up close, try spraying a blotter or a piece of clothing and putting it down and then walking back into the space after your nose has had a chance to sort of, you can clear your nasal palate, your nasal, your olfactory palate. You can clear your palate, come back in and smell that piece of clothing again, sort of near it and then get the essence of it. That happened to me recently with a fragrance. I was thinking of decluttering. I said to myself, I don't know that I enjoy this anymore, but I was doing one of these numbers. I'm going to talk about this fragrance next, but I'm, you know, sniffing <laughs> from the atomizer. And sometimes you get a good smell that way. And sometimes you don't. So what I did is I sprayed my robe. I walked away. I did something else. And I came back 30 minutes later and I was like, what smells so amazing in here? It was my robe with the fragrance that I had sprayed. Imagine, and I was about to like go give it away because I had convinced myself I didn't enjoy the scent anymore. Let's get back to these fragrances, friends. So this is Black Opium Over Red. And I really wanted to sort of clear up something about this fragrance. I talked about this in one of my recent haul videos, like my new beauties videos. And you know, was it that or a monthly fragrance award? I don't remember. But I think a lot of folks got the impression that I didn't like it because I said that it was mostly a vanilla fragrance and not the cherry fragrance that it was maybe advertised to be. And so that was a bit of a misunderstanding. I really enjoy this fragrance. So I wanted to clarify that. And I still stand behind that, that this is not a cherry fragrance. <laughs> there is cherry in the opening. I do find the cherry to be a little bit fleeting. You get sort of hints of that as it dries down into the middle experience of the fragrance. And then down into like the, the super deep dry down, there's just, if anything, like a tiny remnant of the cherry left. But regardless, this is a lovely fragrance. It's almost like what I wish the original Black Opium would be. It's kind of a cross between the loveliness of that DNA on the opening and the newer Le Parfum version of Black Opium that was released, I think, at the top or middle of the 2023 year, where it's like vanilla on top of vanilla. This is primarily a very sexy, thick, dense vanilla fragrance. Why is my top tilted? Wait a minute, y'all. Okay, that's better. Oof, I was going to say, do I have a defective bottle? <laughs> it does have a little bit of jasmine and some hints of coffee. The coffee to me is undetectable as a coffee note. It's almost like it adds a little bit of complexity and maybe slight, slight bit of grit to the fragrance. I hate to say that word because people then associate grit with being like dirty. And I don't mean that at all. I mean, it gives it a little bit of heft. I think this is cozy. This is enveloping. This is sexy. This is a great date night fragrance. I enjoy this. This one, I would probably score in the solid, like right at the seven range for both its complexity, its staying power and its sexiness. I like this and I do like this bottle. Let's keep going. We'll go next to flanker number 499 <laughs> of the Daisy lineup. And that is Daisy Wild. 
listen, Marc Jacobs and his team are busy, busy, busy with these fragrance releases. I have to say this bottle is stinking cute. Look at the stems or the illusion of stems coming down into this green bottle with the different color flowers on top. It's kitschy. It's cute. It's like tacky cute. And I'm here for it. I like this. I, it's interesting. We all go through phases with our fragrance tastes. As I'm moving into spring here, I'm craving, of course, florals, which is very natural for me. I'm a big floral gal. And I'm starting to get a little bug for green fragrances again. I had turned away from them for a while. And now I'm like, hmm, are there green fragrances and citrus fragrances that I want to sort of revive for my own interest? And then some skin scents and whatever. And we'll talk about all that stuff in other videos. But this fragrance, this bottle is super cute. From that perspective, I'm very interested in it. And this is one of those fragrances that I would say don't sample in store, actually get yourself a travel spray or something like that and give it a few wears to see what you really think about it because it's actually not very pleasant right on the opening. And that's usually all that you get in a store situation. You might spray it on a blotter. You might do one of these numbers and go, whoa, and put the blotter down and walk away and then never understand what the fragrance is really like. I do that all the time. I'm very, very guilty of that. This fragrance on the opening, forget what the notes tell you, because I don't even understand the notes compared to what my experience was. I almost picked up like a tart, sharp grapefruitiness in the opening, so much so that I was like, ooh, <laughs> uh. but it's so fleeting. And then as that starts to calm down, this isn't the blotter with the scent on it. This is the blotter with the scent on it. You get this really bright, crisp, green fragrance and it's a bright green like almost zingy as though it has some kind of maybe ginger or other citruses in it and i found this really pleasant i don't know that it's a fragrance that i want to run out and buy the full bottle of especially if i'm going to get my way nectar and i'm going to get tiger lily but i'm going to tell you this bottle is so cute that i may cave i'm in trouble i'm in trouble rest in peace to my wallet and to my shelves that are <laughs> Well, this is glass, but some of my wooden shelves are starting to like, ah, they're starting to creak from all these beautiful bottles coming into the collection. And I have this thing now where it's one in, one out. Cause as you can tell, I really, I don't have any room on my shelves for any more fragrances. So if I buy something, something else has to get sacrificed. It's like the Island of survivor, fragrance survivor. Somebody's getting voted off the Island. So anyway, I'm going to try my best to hold off on Daisy Wild. Initially, when I sprayed it, it was a no when I tried it in Ulta a few weeks ago. And then recently, I went back and tried it again and thought, you know what? This is a very compelling fragrance, especially for the hot dog days of summer. This nice, crisp, green, refreshing. It's a very refreshing fragrance. And another one that just has moderate longevity and projection. Definitely not an all-day fragrance, but in the summer, do you really want a fragrance to take you all the way through 11 o'clock at night? I know I don't. With the heat and everything, I get tired of fragrances probably about midday and want to do something different. So anyway, this one gets a thumbs up. The bottle design, kitschy and tacky and cutesy as it is, I'm going to give the bottle design a straight up nine. I like it. Something about it is calling to me. The fragrance itself, I would give like a 7.5-ish in terms of it being a great summer scent. So I'd like your opinion on the next few that I'm going to talk about, and then we'll go to the 2023 honorable mentions, a couple of which I have and a couple of which I'd like your opinion on also. So next up is Valentino Stravaganza. And I have to say it like that. Every time I look at the name, I want to go Stravaganza. <laughs> this bottle is interesting looking. I don't know how I feel about it looking like green because if it's green, I want it to smell green. And if it's green, it makes me think of kryptonite too. I don't know. Or like the juice that the Incredible Hulk, did he drink juice to turn into the Incredible Hulk? I don't remember. I might be thinking about what you see, like the nuclear juices that you see in the ride in Universal Studios. Have you been on the Incredible Hulk ride at Universal Studios? That thing is a monster of a roller coaster and I friggin' love it. It's so good. But back to the fragrance, friends. <laughs> There are three notes listed for it. You get jasmine, vanilla, and tea. The combination of that sounds really good. I will say that in terms of interest, it's more like curiosity than feeling like compelled to go pick it up. Would love to hear your thoughts. I think the bottle compared to what I've heard this smells like maybe isn't a good match. So that kind of like messes with my brain. You know, I want the bottle to reflect for me mostly the experience that I'm going to get in the fragrance. So I'm going to give this like moderate interest in terms of, is this something that I want to sniff? I didn't see it at Ulta when I visited yesterday. So I don't know what to think about this one. Have you tried it? And what do you think for now? I think, 
I think it may be a pass unless I have an opportunity to really give it a good try. Then out of nowhere, it seems, here comes our girl, Carolina Herrera, Carolina Herrera, dropping yet another fragrance. This one is Good Girl Blush Elixir. I do have Good Girl Blush, and I think it is adorable. One that I'm planning to pull out uh, a lot more here in the spring and as it warms up into the summer. Very pretty, nudie pink bottle. This one has an ombre effect from black to pink or pink to black, if you look at the way that it goes on the bottle. And the main notes here are Elang Elang, patchouli, vanilla, some florals. I've heard a number of reviews on this fragrance comparing it to the original and saying that it's a deeper, sweeter version of the original with a little bit more base from that patchouli. I'm definitely interested in trying this one. Nearly blind bought it today. Oh my gosh, I put it into my Ulta cart. <laughs> Thank God that when I got to check out, my total was outrageous because I had another perfume that I'm going to talk about in a minute in that cart and a couple of other little items for my skin and whatever. And I was like, Veronica, come on, girl, take that out of cart. Try it first. I don't know that I will try it first, but I may wait for the Sephora sale coming up in March sometime, I think, or early April and see if I can do the 20% off of this one. The shoe is stankin' cute. You can hate all you want on these shoes. This is a cute shoe. <laughs> And if you give me a fragrance that lasts longer than the original, which I, not the original, like the good girl blush, because the original is good girl, right? But good girl blush, I got moderate longevity out of that one. If this one lasts longer, but is similar in terms of the bright aspects of it, I really adored that citrus, peony, just yummy combination that was so like bright and fun in good girl blush. If we can get that same thing with a little bit more base, a little bit more body, body, body in the elixir version, I might be in. So stay tuned for that. My interest in this one, I would say is fairly high. Have you tried it? And if so, do let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't be stingy with your information. If you have tried it, tell our friends in the comments what you think. So like I said, I was shopping on Ulta and happened to come across a fragrance that wasn't even on my radar. And so let me tell you, if you are watching your pennies or you're on a budget or something like that, don't even go on these websites. They're so tempting. Just looking at things, these bottles are so gorgeous. And I went ahead and immediately added <laughs> the full size bottle of this fragrance. I will say it's pretty reasonably priced. I think it was in the $95 range. Is that right? For the full size bottle of this. Did I say what it is? Kate Spade Bloom. And so obviously my interest in this fragrance was astronomically high because I blind bought it. So when I look at the notes for this, first of all, before we talk about the notes, let's talk about the bottle. I'm having a nude blush pink moment in my life across many categories. In fact, I'm surprised I'm not wearing something in that color range today and don't have a pink lipstick on today. <laughs> I adore the color, adore the color. Like if I could snap my fingers and turn everything in my house blush pink, maybe I would, except my family might kill me if I did that. <laughs> this bottle is so so pretty. It speaks to every feminine cell in my body with the little gold accents. Oh my gosh. So looking at the notes, it has a white camellia as a primary note, which is a fantasy note of an odorless flower. <laughs> what the heck is happening in Fragcom? So anyway, I'm going to imagine that that smells in the neighborhood of something soft, like a peony flower smell. And it's supposed to be woody and sweet floral from orange blossom, a little cozy, a little, did I say woody? A little cozy and woody. So floral, sweet, cozy, woody. I'm here for whatever's coming out of that bottle. And I have already convinced myself mentally that I'm going to love this fragrance <laughs> and that it's going to be part of the spring arsenal of light, floral, woody fragrances that I'm just, I'm just going to enjoy. So I will keep y'all posted on that when it arrives, but I had to have this. I had to have this. Interest was through the roof, through the roof. I'm having a Kate Spade moment anyway, because I discovered that there's a Kate Spade outlet online. So your girl has bought some purses. If you're curious about what purses I bought, check out my other channel, Essential Veronica. I talk about it all over there. But this fragrance is going to have a pretty place on my shelf as soon as it arrives. So let's take the back end of this video to go back to 2023 and some of the releases towards the end of the year there very quickly. I did want to talk again about a fragrance that sort of blew me away because it is so pretty for what it is. I don't love this bottle and that is J'adore Lore. I mean, this is this not a goofy bottle? Do y'all like this bottle? bottle design. I think I like the original bottle with the coiled neck. I think there's something slightly artistic about that. This one, 
Anyway, the fragrance itself is really lovely. This is white and purple florals. It's highly feminine, highly enticing, very, very crowd pleasing in the air, easy to wear. One I would not hesitate to wear to work, spritz lightly. I wouldn't go too crazy on this because the florals might be a little bit overwhelming for some folks, but it is like everything that I love about white florals with that touch of coolness from a violet note. I had to double check what the purple floral was in there. A little bit of rose. I am going to say that even though it's not showing up in the note structure that we're able to see, I think there's something else happening here, like perhaps a honey note, perhaps an amber note, something that adds a little bit of warm sweetness and complexity. It's very light, like almost like a wispy sort of wave in the background that is sort of supporting, undergirding the florals and uh, the white and the purple florals. This is so, so good. It's one that you want to keep sniffing on yourself. You don't have to overspray like I do. <laughs> don't overspray like I do. This is one that's probably uh, best with just, look how huge my thumb looks there. Focus, Veronica. <laughs> I can't unsee the thumb thing now. This is, <laughs> let me just wrap this up. This is a good one. It's highly feminine and I think you would enjoy it if you like white florals. Okay, let's go on. One release from 2023 that I picked up this year and surprised me in such a lovely way. And I only have a little one ounce and I'm wondering, should I get a bigger bottle? We'll see if I do use this up. Look how, well, that looks dumb. Hold on a second. Let me fix this little bow for y'all. Okay, man, it was like it was going to fly away there, flap away. This is Chloe Luminous. This is so cute. This little teeny weeny bottle, but the fragrance itself <laughs> is mature and cozy and matronly. It's like a hug, a hug from an auntie, as I always say. It reminds me somewhat of Tom Ford's Soleil de Fa in that they both have a nice ambery base. This has vanilla and amber and florals. It's white floral, I think jasmine and then rose, but it's soft. This is a very soft, delightful, enveloping, cozy fragrance. It you know, it's interesting. I purchased a travel spray fully expecting to maybe not like it so much because I don't know, I've never just been into Chloe fragrances. Like I've tried with the other Chloe's. I tried with Nomad. I tried with Nomad Absolute and I just couldn't get into any of them. So I don't know what possessed me to go ahead and try this, but boy, am I glad I did. This is almost like a sleeper hit and so cute. This bow needs to stay down. Love this. And would say, if you like an amber vanilla floral type of fragrance boom you can't go wrong with this and go ahead and buy yourself the big bottle i don't know why i was shy and purchased a little tiny one but how cute is that yes thumbs up i have to give a shout out to this next fragrance the bottle compelled me it drew me in it sucked me in like a black hole i was like this bottle is so pretty and i remember seeing it in store and tried it and thought that's pretty and then never came back to it until recently this is a flanker of la via belle and it's iris absolute i mean hello with the art deco design bottle i think it's art deco and if not we're just going to call it that for the sake of the video <laughs> the sort of peachy pinky scarf on it with the sparkles is super cute this is a sweet iris and what i like about it is that it is sweet and it is iris. Iris sometimes, many times in fragrances, just shows up cold and powdery and nothing else. That's kind of what you get. So the fact that there's an intentional sweet warmth in this fragrance combined with the iris is, I think, what makes this a somewhat unique fragrance on the market. Not to say that there aren't other warm irises, but I haven't come across many. As it also has a little bit of depth from patchouli, like a grounding note for this, but mainly that iris with something sweet, not desserty sweet, just something to add some warm sweetness to this fragrance. And I love that. And I love that the, the scent matches the bottle design in that it's elegant. It's got some nice clean lines, but the roundness for me represents the warmth and the depth, the sweetness, a fig note too, and patchouli add to the fragrance. I think this is really delightful. You definitely have to be an iris lover to be into this, but this gets a big thumbs up. And as you can see, I've already doused myself in this a couple of times. I'd love to get your thoughts on Burberry Her Petals. I do like the design of this bottle, the fact that it's pink and it has flowers and it just appeals to everything that I'm into at the moment. I like that this is supposed to be a fruity violet fragrance with an amber base. That's kind of intriguing to me. I like the thought of the combination of all of that. I've had mixed experiences with this line. Burberry Her, the, or, the original one that everyone goes crazy over that I think has the strawberry note in it. I forget what the defining note is that people say smells like BR540. I couldn't get with that. There was something about it that was sort of nauseating to me. 
I did love Burberry Her EDT with the green cap. It's probably one of my favorite summer fruity types of fragrances. That's a really nice one. I couldn't get with Burberry Her Elixir in the opaque pink bottle. I know folks said it smelled like a strawberry milkshake or something similar. I tried it on and I, I did give that one, that one a good try and I just couldn't, it just wasn't for me. I get why people love it, but it wasn't for me. So I'm wondering about this one. Let me know your thoughts on it. I'm very curious. My curiosity meter here is at a strong medium. And finally, I would really love to get your thoughts on La Via Belle L'Extra if you have tried that. It's a nice looking bottle in the opaque gold and it's supposed to be a deep oody fragrance with the original La Via Belle DNA with it. Very curious about that. The curiosity meter on that is super high. I nearly have blind purchased that and I keep waiting. I don't know why. It's almost like oh, something in me really wants to try this one. I know why now that I think about it. There have been some extreme views. Some people have really, really disliked it and other people have really, really loved it. So it's polarizing that way. I haven't seen a whole lot of reviews in the middle. And so in cases like that, sometimes I want to try first. So would love to hear your thoughts on that. And finally, are there any new releases that you are anticipating? I have to admit, I'm kind of out of the loop. I've been so busy trying to enjoy the fragrances I have and the new purchases that I've made recently that I haven't had my eyes on what's coming out here in the spring. Let me know if there's anything exciting that I should be keeping my eye on. Thanks so much for joining me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. See you in the next video, friends.